Hello and welcome to this Story Builder video tutorial. The title of this video is Inputting Accident Data Using Story Builder Lite Part 1. It is advised, if you haven't done so already, to watch the bow ties, barriers explained, and accident path videos. In this video, I will take an example accident and put it into the Story Builder database using light mode which has been specially designed to make inputting accident data as user-friendly as possible. In Story Builder, every accident takes the form of a path, highlighted here for example, which runs through a bow tie. And if we zoom out, we can see lots of different paths. Story Builder Lite is the fast and easy way of converting accident data into these simple paths. To open Lite mode, click Application Mode in the menu headings, and then click Lite. So, Story Builder Lite, or Light Mode, looks like this. Now first I'm going to open up a description of an accident, which we're going to then input using Story Builder Lite. So, here it is. So, feel free to pause this video so that you can read about this accident in full. In short, the victim was a Dutch female psychologist who was conducting an intelligence test on a male patient. Because of the patient's behavioural problems, a second person should have been present, according to Protocol for Aggression and Violence. But a second person wasn't present, uh, there was no alarm system, they were not observed, a backup wasn't available. And the nature of the test that the psychologist was performing meant that physical contact between her and the patient was possible. Without warning, the patient grabbed her hand and bit it through to the bone and ultimately she was treated as an outpatient at the hospital for her injury. The first thing we have to decide is into which bow tie to input the accident. In Story Builder Lite, all the bow ties are grouped under these blue bar headings on the left. If we click on Falls, for example, we can see all the bow ties for different kinds of fall. Our accident, however, falls under the blue bar heading People or Animals, and goes into the bow tie 20.1 victim of human aggression so we click that and in doing so in the right hand window our center event box appears here and so now we click next and here we are given the chance to name our path and add any path notes we might have so I'm just going to call this example A and put something generic here under path notes and click next. And we immediately learn the valuable lesson that no two paths can be called the same thing, so we're going to have to change our path name to example B, and then click next. Now we start at the very left of the left hand side of the bow tie, where we will fill out all the circumstances and causes leading up to the accent that we can from the data we have. We don't have to start at step 1, if I open up this drop down menu, we can go to any step, and in an incident investigation, this might be dependent upon which information is first available. But we're going to go through this step by step. Step 1 asks us what general activity the victim was performing when the accident happened. Our victim was caring for a mentally disabled patient, so we tick this box. And it was also part of her daily normal activities, so we tick this box. You'll notice there is another blue bar heading entitled Specific Physical Activity Level 2 Ticket Control. Had we selected Ticket Control under Level 1 of Activity, we would have been able to choose options from this level, but that does not apply in this case. Still, it's important to always check the blue bar headings for further levels. So the next step, Step 2, asks about the type of aggressor, who in this case is a mental health patient, so again we simply tick the first box, Patient Mental Health Care Psychiatric Institution. Under Type of Aggressor History, we tick the box patient classified as mentally unstable or disturbed because we are told that that was known and also note that most steps have an unknown box that you can tick if there is a lack of information and click next step three concerns the observed behavior of the aggressor immediately prior to the accident and in ours it was very sudden so we select no observed abnormal behavior just before interaction and click next you can see we're building up a path in the right hand window now step 4 asks us to denote the environment in which the accident occurred. Our accident took place in a psychiatric hospital, so we select Organizations for Mental Health in Level 1. We open up Level 2 and select Psychiatric Organization. And we open up Level 3 and see the option to tick Open Department, 
We don't know if this hospital was an open institution or not, so we leave this blank and click Next. Step 5 is basic victim information. Our victim was Dutch, and we're going to skip language skills and click Next. In step 6, we select which official regulations were violated. Uh, we can select multiple ones if we need to, but in this case we select no violation. And we just have a look at where we are here on the right. And we click Next. In step 7, we reach the barriers and loss of control events that lead directly to the accident. Our main focus is on the BFMs, or barrier failure modes, the safety barriers which failed to prevent the accident happening, and how those barriers failed. Though they appear as selectable boxes, we are not interested in the BSMs, the barrier success modes, as we are not told about any successes in the data. Step 7 deals primarily with the aggressor, who has to lose self-control to commit an act of aggression, and this leads directly to the act of aggression itself. Here we have three barrier failure modes to choose from. We can tick all that applies, they aren't mutually exclusive, but again our accident is straightforward. The failure has nothing to do with provocation, since the attack was unprovoked, or environmental stresses. It has to do with interaction prevention. Next we open the incident factors. Listed here are the incident factors that correspond to the BFM we have selected. The same applies for barrier tasks, human error task IFs, and delivery systems. We are going to select the incident factor, normal action is required of aggressor, seeing as the situation was a routine intelligence test. Next we have the barrier tasks. Now if you want to understand the meaning of any item, you can right click on it and an explanation will appear at the bottom. So here provide means that the barrier simply didn't exist, it was not provided. There was no barrier in place to prevent interaction between the aggressor and the victim. So that is the one that we select. Now we're going to skip the human error for now because uh, none is mentioned in our accident data and move right on to delivery systems. In delivery systems we're looking at how this failure to provide the barrier came about. Well since we're told about the setup of the test we can see that there was no planning to prevent the interaction, quite the opposite, so we tick plans and procedures. Note that in the path here on the right, the boxes we have ticked in this step appear in order of causation, leading from delivery systems to barrier failure modes rather than the other way around. Click Next. There is only one loss of control event to choose from in step 8, which is the aggressor's act of aggression which leads to the accident, so we tick that box and click Next. So, step 9 is the final set of barriers between the act of aggression and the accident. The failure is one of aggressor-victim separation. The incident factor is the victim failing to escape or retreat in time. The victim put her hand too close to the victim, so we apply the barrier task operate or use. The human error task incident factor is mistake because the victim did not know the patient was aggressive and that she should keep a distance. And in the delivery systems we indicate why the psychologist made this mistake. The person who should have been present wasn't, so that's availability. No one communicated to the victim the protocol to have a second person in the room, that's communication collaboration, or made her aware of the dangers, that's motivation or awareness. All this leads to a person protection failure, where there was nothing and no one in the room to protect the victim, which leads directly to the center event, contact with human aggressor. And we can see those last two boxes here on the right hand side. But we also still have to go to the next step and tick the center event box. So if you would like to move on to the right hand side of the bow tie in Story Builder Lite, please watch the next video, Inputting Accident Data Using Story Builder Lite Part 2. And for now, thank you for watching this video.